Hi everyone, I wanted to share with you the makeup that I've been wearing for I'd say the past few weeks, some of it the past month, and some of this makeup is brand new to the market. A couple items are just new to me, and I need your help on a couple products because I know a lot of people love a couple of these products and I just can't seem to get them to work because one day I'll use it and I'm like, oh, this looks great, and then a couple days later I try it and I just think it's terrible. And then I have uh, some new lip products that I think many of you are really gonna love, so I'm going to share that as well. I'm also going to attempt, I'm not great at sharing stories other than uh, the makeup that I'm wearing. I usually just share what I'm doing while I'm applying it. So usually I don't tell a whole different story while I'm applying makeup because my dad used to say I can't walk and chew gum at the same time, which that's really not true because I've been a great multitasker over the years, but for some reason when I'm filming a video, I like to just focus on what I'm doing, not telling a different story while I'm doing eyeshadow, but I'm going to attempt to do that today. We'll see how that goes. I wanted to give you guys an update on the uh, drugs on the cruise ship that I was on and the legal department, how they had to get involved and what happened. So to begin my makeup, I always do my skincare and of course I always, always, always apply sunscreen. Uh, today I used the sunscreen by Kosas. I've already applied it about a half an hour ago. This is one sunscreen that when I'm going to apply makeup, I like to put this on a good 20 minutes before I'm gonna start applying my makeup. But I love the texture of this, and this is an all mineral uh, zinc oxide sunscreen. Do you see how beautiful and glowy this sunscreen is? I bought this when it first came on the market, I don't know, what, two months ago, and then I took it on my travels. And at first I just did not like it because I thought, oh my gosh, it seems so slimy at first because I tried to apply it and then put my foundation on right away and I just felt like everything slipped around. But then, I might as well just put a little bit more on, but then I would apply it and let it sit for a good 20 minutes and when it soaks into my skin, it completely dries down and just leaves just a nice natural finish. No uh, sliminess, no stickiness, no greasiness at all. And it just leaves just that really nice glow. It just makes your skin look really healthy. And you know, my skin is not as great as it used to be right now because I haven't been sleeping that well. My melasma is a little bit darker. It's starting to get better, but golly, like last month, it just, it was much worse. And you know, the bags under my eyes were worse. It's, everything's getting better, but my face was breaking out. I have a couple, uh, you know, spots where the acne healed up. And just, you know, when you're stressed and tired and run down, especially when you're not sleeping, I mean, that's when I notice my skin just looks pretty bad. So, but like I said, it is thankfully getting better, but this is the foundation I'm gonna use today. This is the product that I wanted to get your feedback on. I saw everybody hyping this up, and so I bought it when it first came out. I bought this shade 220, and I think it was just a smidgy too dark. So then I bought this shade 120, so then what I do is I just mix them. I have found it to work best by applying this primer from e.l.f., and the funny thing is, is I'm not really a primer person because my sunscreen works as a great primer. This is actually a really nice primer, though. This is the Power Grip Primer with 4%. Uh, niacinamide from e.l.f. and I saw somebody on Instagram using this with this so that's how I thought all right well then let me try that and I just use the tiniest amount but that's how I found to make this product look a little bit better and actually let me put a smidgy more of it on because I want to actually put a dot on my nose because the weirdest thing I have never ever ever in my life had an issue with a foundation or uh, a tinted moisturizer or anything like that i've never had an issue with product uh, not staying on my face or fading off super easily but this for some reason seems to always fade off on my nose i'm still not convinced that this is an amazing product yet so i'm just going to mix a little bit of each of these shades to kind of make the perfect shade for me. So this is what it looks like when both of those shades are mixed. And I do find that this gives a decent amount of coverage, so that is something that I like. And sometimes I'll even use a brush, so I've tried a bunch of different ways 
but I really like using it with this sponge. By the way, I love this sponge. This is by EcoTools. I'll link everything down below that I'm using. So there's my little pimple. We'll see the coverage that this gives. Of course, I don't leave it on like that. I'm just gonna blend it out here and then shear it out a little bit with this sponge. And this little scar from this pimple will start peeking through, but I always cover it up with some concealer at the end. So what are your thoughts on this product? Have you tried this skin tint? Do you like it? Have you found a trick to making it look really good? Do you have to use a primer with it? What primer do you use with it? Something funny. Do you see the hollows on my under eyes? Obviously I don't have fillers in my under eyes since people always accuse me of having fillers since I have, you know, big puffy cheeks. It's all about lighting and angles and since I have lights hanging over top of my head here just sitting in this kitchen. Do you ever see people do videos and they're like, this concealer is so amazing. It completely got rid of the darkness under my eyes. And in their before picture, they're like tilting their head like this. And their after picture, their head's like tilted like this. <laughs> so it makes it like their concealer so amazing. It's all about angles. Even if I completely conceal it, even if I have concealer here, it's just not gonna completely get rid of that hollows. It's just the way the light is hitting <laughs> on my face. You can't fix hollowness with concealer. You'd have to, fill that up with filler. All right, I'm just gonna go ahead and do my brows. And one little trick, normally I just take a Q-tip and I just clean off any foundation or whatever that gets in my brows. But I saw somebody just take a clean Q-tip and they just do one little squirt on uh, fragrance-free micellar water. And then they just kind of wipe through their eyebrow that way and then kind of dry it off on the other trying to put a brow product over top of all of our skincare and then over top of foundation that gets stuck into the brow hairs, it makes it a little more difficult for the brow product to stick. Oh, and by the way, a lot of the products that I am using are from the brand Kosas, from the same brand of the sunscreen that I shared because they're having a site-wide 20% off sale. I do have quite a few things from this brand that I'm sharing, especially because they just came out with a new eyeshadow palette that is like, perfection for me, my kind of shades, but I don't like to share a lot of the products from this brand that often, even though it is a brand that I love, unless they're on sale. So if you do want to take advantage of any of these products that I'm sharing, now would be the time to buy. I don't know about you guys, but I typically try not to purchase items unless they're super, super inexpensive, unless I can get them on a discount. So for my brow, this is a newer product I've been testing out and I love 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 this this is the brow pop nano from kosas this is the thinnest brow pencil i've ever used that will actually mimic hair strokes let me just zoom in i want to do it super soft because you don't want to press really really hard because do you see how thin this is if you you know are heavy-handed and you start pressing real hard you're going to break this tip off but if you're looking for a brow pants pencil <laughs> if you're looking for a brow pencil that will mimic super duper thin hair-like strokes that just look natural. This is how much smaller this Kosas Brow Pop Nano is, even smaller than the NYX, which I love this NYX one. This is super small and tiny and gives you nice hair-like strokes. The Kosas one also, this lasts so much longer than this one does by uh, NYX. Just to make this look natural, if I just want to fill in this area here, I'm not even looking in a mirror, I'm looking in the viewfinder, so this could be completely wonky looking, but... So can you see the difference between this one and this one? So I don't want it to look completely filled in. I want to look like there are just uh, brow hair strokes. And then they also have a product I've been using for a few weeks that I love. If you want to have that look of big, bushy, fluffy brows, this is their Air Brow Treatment. 
uh, gel. And I have the shade medium brown. I was gonna put the clear on. I really like the clear, so if you just wanna have more of a natural look during the day, I do like to just put the clear gel that they have over top of this. They say it's kind of like that laminated look, but it's not that fake, harsh look. It just keeps my brows looking really nice and polished all day long. It's not like some of those other clear brow gels that you apply them and you're like, oh, these look good, and then you look in the mirror 10 minutes later and it looks like you have lice or something or dandruff in, in your brows. So that's why I really like the clear brow gel. I was gonna put that one on because I was going for a more natural look, which is what I pretty much do every day anyways. But I'll do the brown one just so you can kind of see how it really fluffs them up. Now for me, I like to kind of clean off some of the product because I don't want to put a ton on. But this has like little fibrous stuff in it and it just really fluffs up the brow. And I like to kind of start at the tail just so I don't put too much in the front here. And do you see how this is just kind of lifting up the brow and making them look super fluffy? I mean, it. If you have wimpy brows, I'm telling you this is the product that you want to look into. And I'm really careful not to get it on my skin, I just try to keep it on my brow. And I'll just kind of brush through it just to get it into the brow hair here. And then just kind of lift them up. I mean look at this stuff. This stuff like takes your brows from flat. <laughs> It's like a mousse. It's like almost like a brow mousse. Look at how this fluffs up your brows. Now sometimes I'll put this on first and then I'll put the pencil because this way you can kind of see where you have the bald spots in there. And then the other thing I like to do because I just don't want them to be like this poof, this poofy brow, <laughs> but I know a lot of people love that. Especially if you have super thin brows, you might love this product because it will really zhuzh up your brows but I like to just take a clean spoolie and kind of just wipe some of that off if I went a little too crazy. All right, I'm gonna do concealer, blush, and all that stuff in the end. I'm gonna do my eyeshadow first. Let me just show you this eyeshadow palette. I'm gonna prime my eyes with the Alter Ego Eyeshadow Primer. I love this eyeshadow primer. It's like my favorite one, and it's so inexpensive. But I wanted to show you this new Kosas Undressed Eyeshadow Palette. If you love just an everyday basic nude palette, this is my favorite nude palette right now. I have been wearing this every single day. You can tell it's well loved. These shadows are, these are perfection. These shadows are creamy, they're buttery, they're so smooth. This is an all matte palette except for this one shimmer shade. The shimmer shade, I love it because it's not like a chunky shimmer. It just applies just enough shimmer. So whether you're a beginner, whether you're an expert, this is just to me, this is like, if you're looking for a nude eyeshadow palette, to me this is the perfect nude eyeshadow palette to have. So many other eyeshadow palettes, I might only use two shades. I use every single shade shade in this palette. So with this being 20% off, I think it's a really, really great value if it's something that you had your eye on. For this look, I'm going to put this vanilla shade. They have shade names, but I can't read them. I'd have to go get my glasses, <laughs> but I put this vanilla shade all over. Then I'm going to just put this shade in the crease. Then I will uh, deepen up like the outer V with this shade, use this as an eyeliner, and then this shimmer shade, I'll put this on the lid, and I'll kind of mix it with this shade. But all of these shades are wearable shades. It's just the perfect palette, and I love the size of it. I also love the size of the actual shadows themselves. This is gonna last a long time, but this will be my travel palette. This is just my perfect day and night palette. Also, these eyeshadows are talc-free. They're considered to be clean, and I believe these were made in the USA also. Everything about these eyeshadows in my opinion, are absolute perfection. If you are a nude eyeshadow lover like I am, if you have not tried this palette yet, I'm 99.9% .9 sure you're gonna fall in love.
Okay, so I'm gonna attempt to tell a separate story while I'm doing my makeup, which like I said, I am not good at doing that, but we're gonna try. So if you follow me on Instagram and you follow some of my travels, my husband and I, we sold everything and we travel all over. But right now we're uh, back in Texas helping out my mother-in-law, she's 91, and she fell and broke her leg pretty bad. She had to have surgery. And um, so she's had quite a bit of uh, rehab and it's just been quite a bit with her insurance and um, you know, just helping her out and everything. So normally we stay in a hotel here and I feel like, you know, in a hotel, you, you don't have a kitchen plus the bed. I feel like their beds are just well loved. I'll just put it that way. And so for someone like me that has, you know, a neck surgery and spinal issues, it's just, I wasn't sleeping. I was just starting to stress because you know, dealing with only having like two hours of sleep a night. I was just a mess. But anyways, so we decided uh, just to rent with like corporate housing so that we could have a kitchen and all of that. So they do like the furnishings and everything for us. And so we're just renting here for a couple months while uh, my husband's mom is rehabbing so that we can um, at least feel like we're living a sort of normal life because, you know, we don't live here, but we came here to of course help her out and we couldn't stay at her place because it's just too small and there's there's literally nowhere for us to sleep there's no bed my husband will sleep over there on an air mattress that's why my background is different because we're just staying in uh, corporate housing and these are crooked because i'm talking <laughs> not paying attention let me look in this other mirror so while we were on our cruise we took a european cruise and we had to do like four different cruises back to back to back well, one of the cruises that we took was an msc msc divina i'd never been on msc we always cruise uh, with royal caribbean and celebrity but uh, msc was the only one that was going across uh going across at that time so we said okay let's just go ahead and take take msc well, our uh, balcony, we had never had a balcony in our lives either. We're so cheap. We always do like the cheapest interior cabins. But we said, you know what? We're crossing the Atlantic. Let's just, you know, let's splurge. So we spent a little bit extra. We were all excited and we got a balcony. Well, we had these balcony neighbors who partied every single night. They were so loud. They were so obnoxious and they weren't young. They were like 20 years older than me and they were so wild but they were smoking pot like i'm talking at least 10 hours out of the day and listen i'm not saying i'm against anyone who smokes it i could care less if that's what they do especially if they have you know a lot of people have medical licenses that's what helps them to you know get through with it but i'm not saying i'm against it at all the problem i had was that the the fumes i mean he wasn't doing like the vape he was like literally you know rolling up a joint and big fumes billows of smoke were like coming onto our balcony but then we just said okay forget the balcony we'll shut the balcony door and we would lay in bed at night and then i'm like you taste that i'm like that that's marijuana i mean we would literally wake up while we're in our room with the doors closed and like his pot was like seeping through the walls and coming into our vents and where we were like smelling it nonstop. So I had like headaches because now the smell of it never used to bother me back in the day, but now the smell of it, it just makes me so nauseous and it triggers migraines. I was so stressed out. Well, finally we wanted to just move rooms because I couldn't take it anymore. It was just ridiculous and clearly they were not doing anything about it but they wouldn't move our room. They just kept saying, yeah, we'll get back to you, we'll get back to you. So finally, long story long, they never got back to us, so I finally became a Karen. <laughs> Not really, I just was, you know, a little more firm. I wasn't my normal nice self. And I made an appointment because they would not let me see a manager, so they're like, yeah, you have to make an appointment. This is all while we're still on the ship. And so I'm like, fine, I'll make an appointment. So they wouldn't make me the appointment with the manager for like three days, so. I made the appointment and the manager tells me, yes, we knew uh, that they were smoking from day one, but it's above our head. Uh, MSC allows people to uh, bring marijuana on the ship as long as they have a 
documentation that it's for medical reasons. I said, okay, well then fine, then why don't they just go to the smoking section? Because if you say in the rooms, no smoking in the cabins, then why aren't they going to a designated smoking area? Because now you're making me, you know, breathe in their smoke. And she said, oh, well that's above us, you know, we're not allowed. And I said, well, I would actually like to see that policy in writing because I would not have booked this cabin and I definitely would not have booked it on MSC if I had read online that they had that policy that, yeah, you know, go ahead, come smoke pot on our cruise ships and let your smoke billow into everybody else's room and we won't do anything about it. I would have never, um, sorry, I'm just trying to blend. I'm looking in the viewfinder <laughs> that's like this big <laughs> as my mirror to try to even uh, this out. But I would have never even booked on that ship if I had known that they allow people to smoke pot. First of all, I don't know about you guys, I feel like the way marijuana smells nowadays, it's not like how it smelled back in the day. I mean, it literally just smells like the stinkiest skunk ever. It reeks <laughs> the way it smells. But it's not even just that it's a stinky smell. It just, it makes me nauseous and it gives me migraines. And I don't like to breathe it because uh, now I just have, you know, some lung issues. But if they're allowed to smoke it, great. Just have them smoke it in a designated smoking area. I mean, it seems that simple. I'm not against people smoking cigarettes. Just have people smoke cigarettes in their designated cigarette smoking area. I should and have to breathe in cigarette smoke. So they wouldn't move our room. They, she said, there's no way we can move our room. We don't have a way to move you. She said that is why she pretty much, and she admitted, she said, I have avoided you this whole cruise because we didn't have a room to move you to. So back to me asking her, can I see the policy? She told me she can't show me the policy because it's above her head and that's at MSC's corporate office. They're the ones that have that policy. And me being prior military and liking to see everything in writing, um, I said, okay, well then who do I need to contact at corporate? Because I thought, how is that fair that I paid all this money, especially we finally got our first balcony for this you know, transatlantic cruise <laughs> and now we were miserable this whole time. She gave me the generic email of uh, MSC and kind of blew me off and then she's like, I'm really sorry, um, could I offer you a free massage? Of course, <laughs> I was so annoyed at that point and of course I said no <laughs> to the massage even though I love massages but I thought no, that I'm not taking your free massage. So I emailed corporate. I told them everything that happened. I told them uh, what management said, how they wouldn't move our room. See, I'm talking and I'm not doing anything. I guess I can't do two things at once. But they did not reply, I would say for like, I don't know, six weeks, eight weeks. I, it was almost two months. It was, it was just recently that they just got back to me. But and I actually had kind of forgotten about it, but they left me this long apology. They also said that drugs, including medical marijuana, are not permitted on MSC cruise ships, and I was given incorrect information. They said it's actually illegal, which that's what I was thinking to begin with, that it's illegal, so I have no idea why this whole ship on MSC Davina uh, you know, allowed this the whole time. And they actually um, offered me an entire refund, not just for the cruise itself that we paid for, but we had also uh, paid for a couple excursions. We did an excursion in Portugal. We did one in Morocco, where of course I injured my feet. We bought a couple bottles of wine, water, some things like that. Everything that we paid for on the cruise, which was, you know, a couple thousand dollars more than what we even paid for the cruise, just some of the extra things that we paid for out of pocket, they refunded everything down to the last penny and they made it clear that MSC gave me wrong information and what they did was wrong and that they should not, that guy should have been arrested, first of all. <laughs> he should not have been allowed to smoke pot in all these different countries. It's funny, you hear other stories of other people getting kicked off of other cruise ships for smoking pot, but MSC did nothing about it. This was on MSC Davina, by the way. So I thought that was pretty nice and unexpected that I got a full refund and then some for uh, that trip.
Now I'm gonna put on my concealer. This is also by Kosas. This is probably my fourth one that I've purchased. I have the shade, I think it's 2.5. I will link all my shades and everything down below as well. This one's almost empty, so I popped the thing off and I already bought another one. Uh, but this, for if you have mature skin, this is like one of my favorite uh, concealers for mature skin. And I just, you know, slap it on wherever. I find this concealer to have really nice coverage, but it doesn't get all dried up and creasy and cracky throughout the day. So that's why I really like it. So let me just show you what I was talking about earlier. So even if I have the concealer here, sure, it'll cover that little bit of darkness I have. And I just put it on really lightly because I'm just blending it off. But sure, I can make it look like, wow, I have no, no bags under my eyes, but look, they're still there. <laughs> It's just all about lighting since I have lights hanging down on my face. On this side, I'll just blend it with my finger first. You know what? Okay, so I bought the Kosas Mascara. I don't think I like it. If you guys have this, let me know if you like it. I don't know. I feel like it's a little drying. So this is not something that I would recommend but I, I'm not a fan of this. I've only tried it a few times now. A lot of this other stuff from Kosas, I've had it for quite a while, so I've tested it a million times, but I've only tried this a few times and I just wasn't a huge, huge fan, but let me know your thoughts on this, if you have it, if you like it, but I just, I don't love this. I think I will just use my tried and true, my City Beauty Beyond Mascara. This is one that I really like, especially if I do my eyes a little bit darker because it really makes my lashes look super dark and full and really pretty and it doesn't smudge and smear on my eyes throughout the day. So let me just apply this really quickly. I definitely need some blush and some lipstick because I look super, super <laughs> pale. I picked this up at Sephora the other day. I typically do not buy a lot of expensive blushes, but I saw this palette by Natasha Denona and I thought, you know what, I'm going to treat myself. I thought this was so pretty. For my lip liner, I'm gonna use one of my favorites. This is an affordable one. This is by Mented Cosmetics. This is in the shade Lala. And for my lipstick, I'm also gonna use one by Kosas. I've been using Kosas lipsticks, golly, I'd say for about three years now. They actually discontinued the shades that I used to wear and they reformulated them. And I was a little hesitant because I thought, man, why did they reformulate these and, and come out with different shades? But I actually like the new shades even better than the ones that I had. Stardust is the shade that I used to wear all the time. Stardust Undone, and I think it was called Rose Water. If you are familiar with their original shades, first of all, this little kit, if you want to try their lip shades, this little kit is new. This is 20% off, and it has three of these nude shades, but they're so, so pretty. I'm going to put one of these on today. But if you liked the shade Rosewater or if you like that shade Stardust, Stardust was probably my favorite. This new shade called, what is this called? It's called Daydream. It's almost like a cross between Rosewater and Stardust, I think. And I think this is better than both of them. This is such a pretty shade. Let's just put it right here. Do you see how pretty this shade is? I put this shade on the other day and my husband looked over. I only had this on with a clear lip gloss and he said, your lips look really pretty. Every time I have a shade like this, he loves it. These are considered clean. These also have skincare in them. They say they have uh, mango butter, cocoa butter, and uh, rose hip oil in them. They feel really nice on the lips, but what I like is if you don't like a super kind of uh, gooey kind of uh, slimy type lipstick that will eventually start bleeding into your lip wrinkles if you're getting mature and you've got like those little crinkles in your lips like I do. This stays uh, hydrated on your lips. It's not a matte lipstick at all. 
it's very creamy when you put it on but it'll stay nice and hydrated but what it will do is it'll almost stain your lips so that you don't have to keep re reapplying over and over and over and it will just stay really really pretty all day long now i like to mix a couple shades so that's what's kind of nice about getting these little uh, sets that have different shades actually i'll just swatch all three of them so that you can see how pretty they are this will be the darkest shade that's in this set very similar to uh, this full size shade uh, that I swatched but it's got more brown in it this if you liked the shade undone or stardust this is a lot more similar this would be a perfect shade if you're looking for a beautiful shade for fall this would be a great shade for that actually this is what I'll put on today and then I'll show you how I like to mix them and then the other shade this one's great if you're just wanting to put on just one shade neutral shade this one is really, really pretty. Look at that. That's It's got a hint of kind of a little more, leans a little more brownish, but this is a beautiful fall shade as well. All of these shades look nice with the lip liner I'm wearing. Sometimes I'll just wear the liner a little bit lighter. And then this shade, I love it. I almost grabbed the full size. I'll end up getting the full size of this. But since I saw this uh, shade came in this kit, I went ahead and uh, put the full size back. Look how pretty this shade is. Is that so pretty? I'm a lipstick girl. Lipstick, lip gloss. I love, love, love lip products. All of these will look really pretty for fall, but I love this shade. It looks pretty by itself, but I like to just put a little pop of this in the center over top of one of the darker shades. So that's what I think I'll do. I'll put this darker shade on and then blot it and then put a pop of this shade in the center. You see how pigmented that is? Just that one little swipe and then just blotting. I mean, it pretty much covers both lips. See, even after the second time blotting, there's hardly anything on my tissue, but it stains my lips that color. That's why I love this lipstick. I'll just put a little bit of this lighter shade in the center. And then of course I like a little gloss. I'm going to apply this lip gloss from Kosas. Now this was sent to me. Everything else I purchased with my own money. This is their Plump and Juicy Lip Booster. This is really pretty by itself, but it, I love wearing it over top of their lipsticks. All right, so let me just zoom in and get closer so you can see the final look. Again, everything I used, I will link it down below. And if you wanted to see a more recent video on what I am doing to treat my melasma, I will pop that video up here if you wanted to click on it and check it out. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.